Good morning, little fish. It's Wednesday again already, and we start our assembly today, as before, by lighting a candle that reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. I'm going to pop this candle down here out of the way while we're taking our assembly, but we'll try to remember to blow it out again at the end. Now, our assembly theme this half term is learning about people who have been brave enough to stand up when they know that there is a problem, to stand up and make the world a better place. And last week I spoke to you about Michelle Obama and the fact that she's an activist, so somebody who sets out to make the world a better place. And one of her focuses is on education and the education of young girls, ensuring that everybody has the right to that education. And you may remember we spoke about their family motto last week, which was, when they go low, we go high. Now, today's person who we're going to focus on has written a story that's quite similar and has some similar messages, which I found really inspiring when I read the story that they'd written. So I'd like, you to, I'd like to introduce you to this person. I'm going to show you a couple of photos of her to start off with. So have a little look at that photo. There might be some questions that you'd like to ask, some things that you notice and have observed. I wonder who she is. I wonder what she's holding. I wonder why she's got her hair covered with a scarf. And another photo here that might add a little bit of a clue. Okay, perhaps have a chat amongst yourselves, pause the film, I wonder if anybody recognises her. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that person now. Her name is Ibtahaj Mohammed, and she is a fencer. And she is the first Muslim American woman in hijab, which is the name for the covering of the hair, to compete for the United States in the Olympic Games. She then went on to win the bronze medal in the Olympic Games. And she has used some of that to enable her to go on and write this really beautiful picture book about some of her experiences growing up. Mrs Whitaker shared this book with me and I thought it was so beautiful and so powerful and had a really important message for all of us, big fish and little fish alike, that I wanted to share it with you today. So, with no further ado, let's get started. Mama holds out the pink. Mama loves pink. But Asiya shakes her head. And I know why. Behind the counter is the brightest blue. The colour of the ocean if you squint your eyes and pretend there's no line between the water and the sky. It's the first day hijab. Asiya knows it. I know it. We are sisters. <clears throat> We've all had a first day recently, haven't we? So we know what a first day feels like. Some of the excitement, some of the nerves, lots of anticipation about what's going to happen. The next day, I wait. A new backpack, new light up shoes. I feel special. I feel like twirling. Asiya comes out of the house and I stop. It is the most beautiful first day of school ever. You can see there Asiya wearing her hijab, her covering of her hair for her first day at school in year seven. I am walking with a princess, so I pretend I'm one too. But even princesses have to stop to cross the street. Asiya takes my hand in hers. She says, come on, Phaser. We speed walk it. 14 steps, 14 light ups to get across. Asiya takes me to my class first and she hugs me goodbye. I turn to watch her leave give a little curtsy to the princess going to the year seven area. She's easy to see. Her hijab smiles at me the whole way. My first day hijab is going to be blue too. What's that 
back on your sister's head, the girl in front of me whispers. A scarf, I whisper back. I don't know why a whisper came out. I try again louder now. A scarf, hijab. Oh, she whispers. A seer's hijab is not a whisper. A seer's hijab is like the sky on a sunny day. The sky isn't a whisper. It's always there, special and normal. The first day of wearing hijab is important, Mama had said. It means being strong. I turn, but I can't see blue anymore. I run to the big kid's side. 27 steps to see a seer. I need to give her another hug. I need to see her smile. Faisa? A seer's eyes wonder why I'm here. Are you excited? I ask. About the first day hijab? She nods with a big smile and I feel better. Someone laughs from nearby. A boy pointing at a seer. I'm just going to hold that up so you can see that. Now, one of the things I'd like you to talk about in your classrooms now is what the author has done here, or the illustrator has done here, with the pictures. So on this side of the page, you can see a seer and her sister and some of her friends. And on this side of the page, the illustrator has treated the picture really differently. And I wonder if you can talk with the person next to you about what the illustrator has done and why you think they might have done that. Because I think that's quite significant. Why? thought a seer. A seer's hijab isn't a laugh. A seer's hijab is like the ocean waving to the sky. It's always there, strong and friendly. Some people won't understand your hijab, Mama had said. But if you understand who you are, one day they will too. In class, I draw a picture. Two princesses in hijab having a picnic on an island where the ocean meets the sky. The girl who whispered in the queue says she likes it. She says it so loud the teacher comes over to see it. Hmm. I wonder if a seer drew a picture too. It's break time now and you can see what Faze is doing in the playground. Break time is for five cartwheels in a row. I land the last one near the year sevens, near a seer and her friends. Near, a boy is yelling, I'm going to pull that tablecloth off your head. A seer's hijab is not a tablecloth. A seer's hijab is blue, only blue. A seer turns away. Her friends turn away. They race to the middle of the playground, their shoes pounding the pavement, playing tag. Mama said, don't carry around the hurtful words that others say. Drop them. They are not yours to keep. They belong only to those who said them. It takes me 48 steps to get away from that yelling boy. After school, I look around. I look for whispers, laughs and shouts. But I only see a seer waiting for me, like it's a normal day. She's smiling. She's strong. We cross the road hand in hand. I can't wait to get home, to show Mama the picture that I drew, to show Asiya that I'm wearing the same hijab in it. Because Asiya's hijab is like the ocean and the sky, no line between them, saying hello with a loud wave, saying I'll always be here, like sisters, like me and a seer. 
No, I think this is a really powerful story with such an important message in it. And it really reminded me of Michelle Obama's when they go low, we go high. I'm just going to remind you about Mama's advice to her girls. Don't carry around the hurtful words that others say. Drop them. They are not yours to keep. They belong only to those who said them. Now at Fishbourne Primary School we aim, don't we, that all the words that come out of our mouths are positive ones. We want to be positive learners in our school. It's really important that every single one of us takes responsibility for the words that come out of our mouths. The advice here that mum offers her girls is really important. It would be wonderful to think that nobody ever said any bad words, but we know that we all make mistakes. And it's really important that when a mistake is made, that we don't take those words to heart, that we leave them with the people who said those words. Now in your classrooms, I'm going to ask your teachers to pray with you using our half-termly prayer. And when you've stopped this film, perhaps you can just have a conversation with your class teacher about some of the messages from this story that are important for your class. If you are in years three, four, five and six, I am also going to put in your teacher's pigeonhole this page of the story, which is a note written by the author by Itza Haj about why she wrote this story because I think for those of you who are a bit older understanding a little bit more about what motivated her to write her story for sharing with you all across the world is really important so teachers please look out in your pigeonholes because you will find that in there as well okay children we're going to bring our assembly to a close now with you sharing your prayer with your class and before you do that I'm just going to blow out our candle. Children thank you for listening so carefully it's lovely to see you back in school it's lovely to see you all looking so well and it's lovely to hear your sound bites on the playground when I bump into you at playtimes. Do keep sharing your thoughts about our assemblies and about our activists, our people brave enough to stand up and make a difference to make the world a better place. Bye bye little fish. <laughs>